there. Welcome to the Sustainable Philanthropy Series brought to you by Business Day. On this show, we get to speak to individuals and organizations making impact one day at a time. Today, I'm seated with Faith Murray. She's a supermodel, entrepreneur. She's a one-time basketballer, reality TV star, but most importantly, she's a philanthropist. Together today, we'll be talking all about the work she's doing with her foundation, the Okachi Charity Foundation, a foundation dedicated in honor of her late grandmother, focused on helping disadvantaged children in the areas of education. She's doing amazing work with this foundation and we had to talk to her today. How are you, first of all, Faith? Hey, I'm fine, thank you, and you? Very well, thank you. You look very great as always. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about this foundation doing all of the amazing work you're doing in the areas of education, helping this advantage. Why did you start? Now, it was funny when you were having your introduction, talking about like the books that you have on your show, you said public. So for us, it's one public school at a time. That's our motto. Why did we start? Um, this is in honor of my grandma that dedicated 30 years. That's over the decade of how I to serve in the community in the pen as it's a obviously teacher. So what better way to actually keep her legacy going? And what do we do in Archive Charity Foundation? We're looking at long-term impacts in the public school system for early age education. So that would be from preschool sheets on the age of four to the age of four, that's So yeah, our goal is to make sure that we provide roof, good learning environments, renovate some of schools, um, water and school environments. Teachers also, we are doing big teachers to the school. So basically just making sure that our kids have a bright set future and also have an opportunity for them to decide and work them. Amazing. I was here thinking you do all of this though and you're a model, entrepreneur, you know, just doing all of these things. How easy is it for you to handle merge all of these things you're doing is being a model entrepreneur does it in any way support what you're doing does it in any way help or how are you able to i'm happy you asked this question because so far okachi charity foundation self-funded by me and to be honest please view us we are open to public corporate and private donations um but my life as a model, my life as an, a TV reality star, my life as an influencer, my life as a solo consultant, all contribute towards the foundation. So Morifi Collection, which was founded by me about six years ago, donates 30% of all our earnings to the foundation. Wow. And any influencing job or whatever job I get, I donate for mine 30% to its gift work professionally and of course some of my life saving. Again, that's a feel good um, situation for me because I was brought up in this low income environment where we started at uh, work, which is in Sangana. Uh, Sangana was the school my grandma taught for over 10 years and she served in the community for over 30 years. So it was only right for me to start from Sangana. But again, we are in in Ghana, that's Port Harcourt, we're in Lagos, we're in Abuja, we're in Kano. So we're not restricting ourselves through where we're from. It is an opportunity to ensure that quality education and a better life is being given to every kid in disadvantaged and low-income areas. You've talked about how you decided to start from where you started out. Charity begins at home. <laughs> Perfect. So for you, can you share some a success story for you? I mean, I know that you started, you started precisely when? About six months ago. Six. It doesn't look like that. One of the I can report, yeah. Wow. So six months ago, you started. What key success story have you, you know, documented? Okay. So we have, like I mentioned, six schools we've adopted and four different states. Oh, one that stands out to me is our volunteer teachers initiative. So what we do is we go into schools, minus renovating the school, we give out teachers. So in a public school system, you realize that subjects that both of us used to have, they're like fine arts, um, ITC, that's computer science. Even some, most of the schools we actually intervene have two, three classes merged together. 
So imagine a primary one, two in one class and a teacher comes in and says, well, today is a primary one, primary two, don't write any. And you sit down in class all day. Today is a primary two, primary one, do not write anything. So for us, I feel like if we're going to give anything back to the school, it's making sure that after providing the roof, after giving them uniform, after giving, helping to also um, snack, you know, just to encourage kids to come to the volunteer initiative, very important. Making sure that these kids have quality teeth. But again, you can provide everything you want, but if there are no quality teachers that can actually teach this kid how to be better, to introduce to them the new technology, new studies, the scheme of work, everything we're doing. Okay. Remember, the team is a long-term part. So for our most impactful story, I would say, is two months into us adopting the school in Ghana, which is in Port Harcourt. One of our volunteers, I'm proudly saying it because I'm smiling, took the primary five and six kids to a competition state school, and they came up number one in that school. And it made us understand that what these kids need, it's, they're not dumb. They're not, it's not like they're not smart. It's the fact that they don't have people guide them. So it kind of gets us to the point where we say, you know what? We're going to give more teachers. To so this alone got me to think about, you know, spreading this stuff to other states. You know, until today, I think we are all baffled. And the principal said something to me. Said, Faith, I never thought I would hang an award behind my and till she said, for I'll forever be grateful to you. So that feeling of giving back, I'm having goosebumps because again, this is where I grew up from. I'm from Job. I always said that on the show. I'm from Job and Port Harcourt. So hearing people who were from the same place where I'm from, getting to understand that I can give back in 10, 15 years. I want those kids to come back and give back. I'm not doing it because I want people to see or oh, look good or whatever. It's to understand that if this young girl, this one young girl can make this much impact. Imagine if we have corporations collaborating with us. Imagine if we have private sectors, public sectors, you know, folks who are out there saying, you know what, let's tackle the main thing in our problem, in our community. Education, there are 20 million kids out of school in Nigeria as so of 2024. Two million. That's like a whole country. And I agree with you where you mentioned education being being the bedrock of everything that we do on uh, advancement as a country, as a people. You have to start with education. Yeah. Look at you. You're going back home, going back to where you started out from and, and you're doing this work you're doing and your principal saying to you that she wouldn't have imagined that she'll be hanging an award. And this is so that school has been existing for, my grandma thought for 30 years, so it's probably there for like past 50, 60 years. Imagine that. Yes. And imagine that. So it's a great work that you're doing. I know that certainly it's just six Yeah. <laughs> said that it doesn't feel like six months. It does. Uh. Certainly there are challenges that you're also facing yeah. while you're doing all of this. Can you share with us some of the challenges that you and to face along this line of work and how you're able to amount them. So I know that there are more we're going to face in the future, but for so far, I would say infrastructure in these low-income areas because we have to come into schools and rebuild a school. So you have a class of over 60 to 100 kids sitting on You have some of the classrooms that roofs are falling down. So when it's a rainy day, what happens? Right, you have most of the schools which we intervene supplying water for them, so you have them still digging into what we call short. I, I don't want to use the vowel word, but imagine in 2024 you are having our people digging a hole this country, the toilet system, where both of us we walk into like a eatery or a restaurant and we, there's water on the floor, and we're like, I can't use this restroom. You understand but these are folks that don't even have a rest and never use the flushing system 2024 so i'll say that's one the infrastructure because you have to rebuild two is also funding like i said it is privately funded 
So imagine if I collaborate or have like public um, support or even private support or even corporate support, you know, of course, there's more to do. There are 20 million kids out of school. We're trying to keep the kids that in school, stay in school. And we're trying to lure those kids that are out of school, I mean, because one of the things we realize, especially faculty, is that the kids, they attend school between one to two days a week. And not because they want to, because they have to do chores at home, they have to help their family sell because of the economy. So again, our job in Okachi Charity Foundation is contributing long-term impact, but also making sure that this impact we make generations from generations benefit. Um, I think we'll get in there. How are you able to advocate for education and its impact on a broader scale? So, well, one of the things we do is we actually go into the community and create awareness and collaborate with other existing community leaders that are doing similar things. We also work in collaboration with the principals of the school. So one of the things we tell them is we're not here to change anything. Don't worry, we're not changing the color of any rules, but we're just going to make sure that we're following the education system. So if you're not doing that, we're not actually taking part of our outreach. Recently, what we did with Lagos State Hospital, aka Oriye Agege Agege, um, we actually helped out with 500 kids out of their 2,500 kids back to school program. One of my reasoning is you can create everything, renovate the school, you can provide good teachers, but if there are no kids schools, who then will you teach? Long member, long term impact. So you did some work with the Orilia Agege Hospital. Tell us about that. So our goal in Okachi Charity Foundation is to eliminate inequality in education. And that's why I was speaking on public schools. A really Agege hospital director is one of the best so far we've worked with. So he's adopting the U.S. system. He was a doctor in the U.S. in Atlanta. And, you know, when in the U.S., you have like the back to school checkup for your kids. And in Nigeria, we don't have that. So our goal was, okay, so if we're providing housing, renovation of school, uniform, lunch, teachers, what about if there are no healthy kids? Then what? You know, what was all this? A long-term impact would be to also work together with the director of this hospital who gives out 2,500 kids. Check up, back to school check up. So I check up. If you have an eye problem, he will actually um, prescribe glasses and also give that glasses to them. Yeah, check up, blood um, testing and the rest of them. So we actually um, sponsored 500 kids. We had our volunteers there because our goal is to work for me. Yeah, long-term goals and how we work with our project is working with the community of the that are in the system. Because it will help us. Again, we can't just walk into a system and try to change. We want to be able to collaborate with people who are already there that can also teach us. Because I don't know it all. My PM doesn't know it all. He has 15 years in the industry working for foundations, but every school we have adopted always learns something different. So speaking of collaboration, have you gotten to collaborate with, I mean, you've spoken about really Agege and the likes. What other organizations or even governments have you partnered with? What has that been like for you? So far, uh, we've only had community engagement and support. That is our volunteers. Again, we have volunteers that will leave their homes. Our teacher initiatives are all volunteers also, right? So that's so far and also working with the principal of the school. Just to make sure it's a smooth transition. All these things we're doing work smoothly. We're hoping um, to get support from the government, from private sector, from corporate sectors, and from the public. Um, so far, it's been privately funded, but we're open to working, getting funding from what are out there. So speaking of collaborations and all of that, I know they will definitely come with, you know, this is the foundation. What are your processes? Are there checks and balances? So have you been able to put any in place? What's the check and balance process in terms of people, not just, you know, the kind of teachers you use, are you making sure that the 
you know, the fund that is coming in, I know you've been privately funding for now. How you make sure that the funding that is coming in, it's going to this school and it's X, Y, Z amount. There are 200 of them. It's not some teacher that will take it to their houses to, you know, give their children, you know, feed their own children when they have so. What are the checks and balances in place? I'll start with the volunteer teacher initiative. Our applicants always call it a rigorous process. They call it that because, again, I don't know how other people have, to, you know, employed teachers, but for us, because the kids are, are the main reason why we're doing this, we're not doing this to look good. We need to make sure whoever we're bringing in the system to help us out, to work with us, is actually in pattern knowledge. And for us to do that, you have to have your teaching license. If, if you don't have a teaching experience, that's okay, but you're going to have a one to two month probation with the principal of the school. Again, that's where working and collaboration comes in to assess. We also have folks who have years in um, teaching, but have not had any training after 10, 15 years. And if you haven't, there's no way these kids can compete with kids after COVID, before AI, before the internet. So again, this is why we have the teachers program where these teachers can actually get monthly or sometimes bi-monthly um, training from our foundation. Wow. And how, again, you, you mentioned, um, which is very funny, how are we sure that these stuff are going to the students? I always tell people, I said, if we look at what we've been through working with folks, we would have packed up the second day and left. But each time I would look at my PA and I said, remember why we're doing it for the kids. So people will notice on social media that I'm hands-on. I'm hands-on because I need to make sure that the kids are having it. We've had greedy ones that we have to go there ourselves. Now, example is for the feeding. We make sure we have our volunteers for all the schools we have adopted, like in the North, Kaduna, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and even here in Lagos, we have volunteers that actually would do check and balances. If it's for uniform, we actually contract our own designers that will make this uniform. We need the names of the kids, their age, their class. So again, we're not just dropping off the uniform. When we go there, we're calling each by their classroom. If they're not there, that's fine. Same thing with the uniform or bringing water supply to the school. We are also going out there and vetting out, you know, founders, folks that can actually do this job and see who is best fit for it. Again, there are checks and balances because we have policies. We have criteria on how we kick. We have policies. Even I, as a founder, I have I have a policy that I can go above and beyond. Now, one of the reasons I said for six months I've been able to do this and. That was to make sure that we are structured. But when outside funders come in and they say, "What? let's see your books, how have you been doing things? In as much as I send money back here to do all this job, I still have an accountant that has to make sure that the money that we're giving out is for this. You know, we have like our teachers, volunteer teachers, we have the principals, they have to sign in. Once or twice, we surprise them occasionally visit. I go to the school also, and just to catch them on aware to see, you know, what are you doing? And again, it gives me great joy when I walk into classes and you see them interacting, not just teaching, but there was a teacher called Miss Loretta when she does home economies and she was talking about food. I say, you, that like fufu, she called the student's name and everybody stared laughing. You could tell for you to be able to point out a kid in that school, you know your student. And then Mr. Charles, the one that led the kids to number one state's testing while he was teaching them. And when we had our first annual dinner, the first thing he did was he said, hey, ma'am, he called out kids that worked on foot two miles away to come to school. The kids that were only allowed by their household to attend school twice a week because they have to help out at school. Now, that gave me great joy because, again, it's not just teaching. Now, this transformation, this long-term impact does not just end in a classroom. These teachers are like mentors. So we also want these kids to realize that, hey, I want to be like this teacher when I grow up. I want to be able to do this. So you have kids like to say they want to be bakers. Next year, summer, we have a summer program suggested by my son in Potaka for over 300 kids. That's our one thing. Yeah, one of the things we're doing is you're having ITC, you're having games, because we need to stimulate their brain. Critical thinking is not, again, it's not just classroom learning. That's why we donated playgrounds to these kids. Why? We need breaks. Both of us, when we 
I get out of work, we need breaks, right? In between, we go for lunch. These kids don't have anything break time. They sit around or they just continuously teach for hours. And it bores you when someone is like, I'm talking for probably five minutes now and you're probably going, girl, you know. So imagine these young kids sitting down for three, four hours, one lecture, and they don't have any way to release that stress, to enjoy their kids. They're supposed to have fun. So one of the things we do is, especially like the playground projects, um, a shout out to our Patakot PM, Faith. Under the rain, sun, she made sure with the rain that she was supervising those folks that were installing stuff to make sure they were also safe. Because what we want to do again is a long-term impact. So you don't want a situation where tomorrow someone will say, oh, the playground installed, what happened? They got injured and rushed to the hospital. And I'm proud to say when we installed that playground, we had the market, the school is front of the market. We had over 100 market folks walking into and just what, like, they haven't seen a playground, you know, or a few of them was like, why are you doing it? You know, so again, there are checks and balances and I want to be here tr- uh, responsible. There's transparency, there's uh, integrity. I always tell people good names to take it to rooms that money. That was taught by my grandfather, and since then that has been the loop thing. A good name will definitely take you to places that, places that, how did you say it? Money cannot take you. That's why they say money, money misroads sometimes. And they'll, even if you're rich, you certain wealthy people cannot sit back in tape wise. You have money doesn't mean that, you know, you're supposed to sit down with us, like integrity. You know, are you loyal? Do you keep to your word? For me, my goal has always been, just like when they say faith more, people say, oh, faith, oh, I like her. You know, there's this reputation. I want that for my foundation. I want the next U.S. summit, they're looking for folks that are working in Nigeria towards educational impact. Okachi Charity Foundation should have that thing, you know, integrity, that name where they go, oh, they are small, but have you seen this foundation? Whatever school they adapt, trust me, they make long-term impact. We want the principals, we want teachers, we want the kids to go back home and say, you know what? There's these people that wear purple, that's what they call us. Every time they come to the school, something new happens. They're always renovating this, they're always bringing something. And again, our goal is to also increase enrollment. So we always talk to the teacher, principal. If we give you this and you keep it home, how then will you have this? enrollment how then will you say oh my school is this that and i told the principal i said now you have this hanging i'm sure your your instagram and your whatsapp status has updated she was like yes now <laughs> certainly <laughs> i said what we're doing is for you it's for me it's for the kids our countries our community i think so far it's just educating them we are self people are selfish you know people want to talk about me what do i get out of it. You work. We also have people like folks who make our chairs for us. Maybe it's 20,000 hours to make a chair, just an example. And we will reach out to them and say, oh, we're a foundation trying to do this for kids. They will hike up the price of 50,000 per chair. And I'm like, don't you want to help this kid? This is your community. Yes. Because we try to work with people in the community. So our vendors are people that live in the community. That's how we work. We're giving them job. We're also giving back to the community, every single thing within the community. Our sewing of our uniform is in, in that community. But in panel where we are giving out like clothes, school food, and the rest of them, we're actually engaging their community. So folks who sell rice, so folks who sew like their uh, kaftan, folks who have their shoe business, we buy from them. And I don't know if you've checked our Instagram page. There's a 16-year-old girl. She's the one doing the back-to-school backpack. Wow. And she's been making backpacks since we never know the difference between backpack she makes and the one you're going to buy from a manufacturer. Yes. It's the only difference is that, of course, she's thin, so it takes a longer time to produce. Again, imagine encouraging a girl like that, you know, the foundation's going, seeking out folks who actually do these things instead of outsourcing. I mean... That for me is the sustainable philanthropy we're talking about because all that you've said, it's looking like you are not just even focused on the school that you're serving. You're also serving this community, giving back to this community, giving back, giving jobs to people. 
all of this you're doing with your foundation. Yeah. So for me, that is far reaching impact. That for me is sustainable philanthropy. Um, how did you find this young lady? Which question? This lady that is making this bag. So I'm great enough and grateful enough to have an amazing team. So again, one of the things we do is remembering that education is just in the classroom. There are some people that just want to make bags, that want to be bakers. So we have kids in our school that say, Mom, I want to be a baker. We we'll say, okay, that's fine, but can you at least get to primary six or at least up to high school? And our job is to make sure that we have home economics teachers that every Friday we do practical, right? So how do we find them? My team, I tell them, I said, for summer program, we want to bring designers in Port Harcourt to come into this kids that want to sew. We're not going to subject the whole kids. You know, kids who want to sew, they have their own, their own job. Our job is just making sure that some days they come in and other days we provide transportation to send these kids down to you know their showroom. Now we also have folks who say they want to be bakers. We're actually sending these kids to baking you know, schools to see how they are being done because when they go back home without changing, without puff puff, and they're telling their, fr- their mom, I made this, guess what? Their mom will send them back to school. Go and learn because in the next two, three years, they're going to be using that as an income for their family. Mm-hmm. So my team, I am so grateful. It is again, we just started, but I've been blessed with the best team that outsource whenever we come up with this new vision. It's what can we do? How can we impact these kids? All kids are not the same. It's not all about education as in what you learn in school, but what else can we do? I want this to outlive me. I want 20, 50 years, just like my grandma has passed, but she doesn't know what we're doing. Even though it's yeah, this and but, doing it. Yeah. Yeah, but well, because she actually dedicated her life to being serving the community, and I'm taking it as her legacy. And I want, if after I'm gone, for someone else to continue. Thank you so much. Everything you said, I mean, like, I, I'm even fascinated listening to you. Um, I can feel it. I can. It's palpable. I can see the passion. I can feel the passion. You genuinely want the best of the children. You want something that leaves you. And the details, you know, you talk to us about how in embark on trainings for the teachers. You talk to us about how you empower the community. Every single thing seems to be accounted for. For me, the next question I'm going to be asking, I'm curious to know, is how this has personally impacted your life. All of these things you're doing, surely there's an impact for you. Yeah. How does it make you feel personally, professionally? Well, I'll say it has deepened my Verizon when it comes personally and also public my job because it has helped me personally and also privately because it has gotten me to see life differently. And again, in as much as, yes, I am kind, but it has gotten me to also be kinder to ask people, how are you doing? Not just how are you doing and you're working away, but to really ask them, like, how are you doing? You'll be so surprised how some people will break down. You just accident like that. So in a wider Verizon, it has helped me my leadership skills. Again, working with people, I get to work with more people. It has also given me opportunity to sit down that I would never have thought about working with of education, trying to see how we can actually work together with the teacher, making sure that, you know, even like the exam boards, whenever they took the testing, we had to make sure that whatever they're studying, the scheme of work is what the school is following. Uh, we just spoke to OPEC in Port Harcourt, again, making sure that whatever we're doing is legal, it is moral, it is also according to the law. Those are the three things I always tell them. I don't care what you're doing, making sure that this foundation is not a corporation. That means it's not a business because it's supposed to give back to you and me. So again, when you go to bed, remember the last kid's video you saw because how can you change lives? They wake up and guess what? My volunteers will tell me, hey, now what do you think about this idea? You know, you have to attract people who have the same passion. And we understand that, you know, that country is hard. So what do we do for our volunteers? Whenever they go out for an outreach, we give them some kind of like weapon. Our volunteer teachers give them some kind of like a sheet every month also 
not a salary, but at least enough for them to do what they're doing logistic wise. And again, I think we have about eight teachers right now. So imagine in two years, you know, what Okachi Charity found is larger scale. So it has gotten me to think about, you know, Nigeria, not just us coming into work, but how can I make a thing that's not just this little region's benefit, but our country as a whole. So yeah. You get to face any sort of stereotypes whatsoever, like you walk into the ruins on a model and they're wondering what they should know about education. You have, <laughs> have you in this past six months witnessed anything like that? Okay. So remember your introduction? There was a lot going on. <laughs> um I always tell people like my physical appearance takes away from me what I have to offer and what I have to give back. But my superpower is that when people get to sit down with me, it's like wow i'm blown away like you don't look like i was like faith this is not what i ordered for what i got and i said i understand and that's the good thing about it is if they give me a chance and we all we're women right i'm i'm pretty i'm tall i used to be a model fashion is always going to be a part of me looking pretty is always going to be i'm not going to put myself in a box because i want to help people I need people to know that it's okay for you to look pretty because you want to go to work and look pretty. I want the girls in the school to know that you have to dress proper, you have to act proper. I want the boys to also know that there are also proper etiquette, how to carry yourself, do you understand? So I do have lots of that, but I dress appropriate. So if I'm going to the ministry office, and especially now, which I have to get my head covered, I have to wear long dresses. If I'm going to this, I wear our foundation shirts, I wear trousers. I don't wear elaborate outfits, right? If I'm going to community outreach, I make sure I'm properly dressed. Again, my son is literally with half the time. But I also want him to see, you know, a reflection of who his mom is, what she's doing, an example of what a woman should look like and all. So, yeah, I can't wear a bikini when I'm going out, can I? So, yeah, <laughs> so I do. But so far with six months progress we've had, I can say that we've had a lot of change of hearts, people who come back. We had a conference that we attended, Okachi Charity Foundation in June, the USCID. And I met beautiful ladies that had, you know, there's a lady called Miss Lydia, the one of them called um, the secretary, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Clarice. You know, these are folks that all I did was start out with them like this. And all they do now is send me videos, send me stuff that, you know, that is enriching me, enlightening me about the problems going on and also how to help. Because helping too is not just financial. You know, sometimes it's just mentorship. You know, these kids talking to them, sitting down with them. There's a video on my Instagram that we're like, what? You walked into a school, my PA and I, the first time and they were practicing for inter I said, I used to play basketball and I used to do track. And so I say, thank goodness we're wearing trainers and we compete with the kids. We're rolling. And they're like, wow. So I was like, you better get me. Or else you're not getting it. <laughs> so again, it's putting your guard down. You know, service, we're in the service business. You're not in a um, glamorous business where you have to think or everything's all about you. So you have to be humble. And when you're humble, good things, you attract good things. You attract people really want to see so far I haven't had any problem I just have that initial don't worry you know I went to primary school in Port Harcourt I went to secondary school in Port Harcourt I have a diploma in law I also have a degree in business admin in Texas State best thing I just completed a business school in Harvard I've also taken continuously a class in the U.S. United States consultant um, peace really best thing so again I know I have to enrich myself and it's okay for people to have a perception about me. Honest with you, that's my. Uh, I don't care. I know who I am. That's fine. I think one thing <laughs> that can I, I mean I can just describe you with right now is grounded and focused. Thank like you. super grounded and super focused. So for me, my next question for you will be: What's the future looking like for Okachi? What are you envisioning next five years? Next day. You already mentioned that you want something that will keep you legacy. Well, let's talk five, ten years. What are you? So, like I said, we are now open to collaboration with other foundations. We're reaching out to other foundations that are in our sector 
even primary school, secondary school, yeah, because we can learn from them. We want to work with people that are already in the system. We also want to learn from them and we want we're also looking at collaboration with private sectors. How can private sectors come in? Operation, how can they come in? We don't need, it's not all about money. Again, like I said, the mentorship program. Imagine a banker or a finance person in a corporation coming in once a week to teach. Imagine someone who is like a kid track in a corporation coming in to help those kids that says, bacon is what I want to do. The long-term goal is just making sure that we have long-term impact. That means whatever school we are in now, extending not just six schools, there's a lot of people in our country. There's a lot of public schools. We have about seven, some to 6,000 public schools in the area. So there's a lot of work to do. This is just a little yeah. start. Yeah, so my long-term goal is to make sure that when people hear Okachi Charity Foundation, they hear the change, the difference. Because that's what we want to do on public school at a time. One public school at a time. <laughs> you heard it. It's where you see the people in the purple outfit. <laughs> yeah. You know that they're about to bring a change. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Thank Faith. You. It's been so lovely speaking with you. you. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Yes, I have. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching the Business Day Sustainable Philanthropy Series. I've just finished speaking with Faith Mori, who has spoken to us all about the Okachi Charity Foundation. I dare say I was blown away. I hope you keep watching. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Thank you. <laughs>